Hello everyone and welcome to a game that uh, I played like uh, an hour and a half ago and sorry about no videos yesterday uh, I'm playing a tournament it's uh, being played in my hometown and also yesterday I had to go uh, to, uh, to Zagreb capital of Croatia my friend had a birthday uh, so I uh, didn't get a chance to, to do any videos but um, I didn't prepare any videos for today either so I decided just to show you one of the games I played uh, this is the uh, the sixth round of, of the tournament and we're gonna have three more rounds tomorrow so I'm playing against Matija Ostovic uh, he's a FIDE master from uh, a neighboring uh, town, Koprivnica, a uh, very strong player, and I had the white pieces against him. Uh, so let's check it out. Uh, I opened with e4, as I usually do, and he replied with uh, d6, the Pirz defense. Now, uh, although, uh, uh, you know, people say a lot of things about the Pirz defense, but uh, the, the fact of the matter is that it, today it's being played even on the highest level, even Magnus employs it from time to time. So I continued with d4, just grabbing the center, uh, he went knight f6, knight to the c3, and knight b to d7, preparing e5. Uh, I uh, developed the bishop, bishop to e3, we have e5, uh, striking in the center, and knight to f3, just continuing development. Uh, I thought about, uh, instead of knight to f3, uh, may maybe going for the for the f3 uh, structure, but uh, I, I didn't think that he would actually castle kingside, I, I thought he would just... Uh, uh, continue developing and if I start pushing on the king side it he would just castle queen side so I, I decided against it and I said okay we'll just see uh, what happens I, I have never actually studied the the Pirz defense uh, bishop to e7 I played bishop to c4 just putting my bishop on a nice diagonal he castled <coughs> uh, I castled and he played c6 now here I have to be a, a, a little bit careful uh, because b5 will come with tempo and if uh, if I allow b5 he attacks the bishop uh, I have to move it, next move uh, he will play b4, attack my knight and dislodge the defender of the e4 pawn, so he's just going to be able to snap it. So bishop to b3, uh, just moving it back, I don't have to retreat with the bishop, I could push a4 also, just maybe bishop to d3, uh, but I decided uh, I want to keep my pawns where they are uh, and uh, just keep the bishop on the long diagonal. So he continued with b5, and I played a3, preventing b4. And here, there is one game where a5 was played, but uh, uh, he decided to go bishop to b7 first, and it is as of move 9 that we have a completely new game. So I uh, decided to continue developing, I played queen to e2, I want to get my rooks into the game, uh, and also, yes, I'm putting my uh, queen and rook on this uh, awkward diagonal, uh, but I, uh, I decided th that there was no way uh, to take advantage of this. He continued queen to c7, also developing the queen connecting rooks uh, and I went rook a to d1 uh, he went a5 now b4 is definitely an idea and also now if uh, the bishop comes to a6 the, the rook will be protecting it so I have to watch out for bishop to a6 if b4 comes then it comes with an attack on the knight and also on the queen so I have to prepare for this uh, I played d captures on e5 I'm not a, I'm not a fan of breaking the tension in the center but here uh, I just uh, didn't find a useful way uh, to continue the game so he played d captures on e5 and now uh, bishop to g5 uh, just getting rid of one of the attackers of the e4 pawn and giving my my queen uh, a little more uh, breathing space uh, also possible uh, instead of bishop g5 was just knight to h4 going after the a, uh, the f5 square which which would be nice uh, but uh, then again just g6 i, I have to go back uh, i decided against this so bishop to g5 this is what i played uh, and he went knight to c5 uh, here uh, bishop to a6 uh, is possible right away uh, but then maybe maybe you allow some rook captures on d7 action where knight will be unable to capture as uh, uh, the bishop would hang so uh, something like rook captures queen captures knight captures here and of course black is better but uh, it's uh, it's counterplay you may maybe don't want to allow and I, I, I forgot to mention the time control we're, we're playing uh, 45 minutes plus 15 seconds increment so after bishop g5 he decided to go for knight to c5 Puts pressure on the bishop, but uh, his real plan is to remain over the knight to e6 to, to, to go after the d4 and f4 squares. So uh, I first captured on f6. We have bishop captures, bishop captures, and now knight to d2. Now uh, my e4 pawn is nicely defended, if, even if he gets rid of uh, one of them. And, uh, well, next I can go uh, either develop the rook to e1, I can move the queen, uh, and uh, avoid this bishop to a6 uh, threat altogether. So he played bishop to a6, and it is the uh, the 
uh, best move recommended by the engine and I went queen to f3 now my point the, the point is that if you uh, if you attack it now with b4 yes you are attacking the knight and you go after the rook but I can just block both with knight to e2 and here if if, if trades I can trade and if he trades uh, knight for bishop I can just capture and I have a nice open file for my rook so first he went knight to e6 and now I just decided to, uh, to trade it here uh, so bishop captures he played f captures and now Yes, his pawns are doubled, but on the other hand, he will have a very strong pressure along the f file. Also, uh, he will most definitely remaneuver this bishop uh, to, to c5 from where uh, the, the f2 pawn will, will be under attack. So here, I just uh, I don't want to allow b4 now if I don't have to. So I just played b4 to stop this uh, plan altogether. And sort of, he does have the bishop pair, which I really uh, you know if I can, I prefer the bishop pair. But here, I just uh, didn't find a way to. Uh, to to avoid trading my my own bishop pair, so he played a captures. I played a captures, and he played bishop to e7. Now opening up an attack on the queen and also on the b4 pawn. I played queen to h3. I said, okay, we, we can trade b4 for the e6 pawn. e6 pawn comes with check, and he makes the the correct decision. Uh, he doesn't uh, guard the e6 pawn, uh, he just captures here, he allows uh, queen captures on e6 with check, king to h8, and now he will definitely have a very strong pressure uh, along the f file. I played knight c to b1, uh, just getting getting the knight out of harm's way, uh, he played bishop back to c8, attacking my queen, and I went queen back to b3. Uh, just moving the queen with tempo, as the bishop is under attack, he went bishop back to c5 also, putting pressure on the f2 pawn, and now I went knight to f3. And here, uh, the material on the board is equal. Uh, uh, the plus side for me is that I, I have two pawn islands, he has three pawn islands, but the bishop pair is, is extremely strong here, and I don't really have a good way of uh, deciding what to do with my knight here. Probably something like knight to d2, and then uh, seeing what wh where to go from there. Maybe move the queen, get the knight to b3, or something like that. Uh, well, he played bishop to g4, makes sense. He wants to bust open the king side. Also, I cannot move the knight as uh, the, the rook would hang. So, rook to d3, just defending the knight. And here, uh, I think the, the situation on the clock was I had some 18 minutes and he had... Uh, a, a, a little bit less, I think around 14, and he played queen to e7, which uh, is definitely uh, a good idea. My, my plan here is if he does like nothing, if he makes a slow move, maybe I can go queen to c3 or queen b2 and go after the e5 pawn. So maybe maybe force him to, to trade on f3 and allow uh, this rook captures on f3. But he played queen to e7. His, uh, his idea is that if I make a slow move, let's say something like h3, then he goes bishop to e6, attacks my queen, and after I I move the queen, let's say queen c3, go after the pawn, now he just goes b4, uh, pushes pushes the queen back, uh, and after I move the queen, best best is just to capture on e5, then bishop to c4 wins, wins the exchange here. So let's say queen captures, uh, bishop captures, and now, well, you do have to move the rook, rook d7, you go after the bishop, but he just captures on f1. And now it doesn't matter what you do, if you capture here, he just captures here, uh, it's uh, not a problem. Uh, uh, if king captures on f1, then he just uh, defends uh, the bishop and he's uh, he's up the exchange. I'm up a pawn, but still, he, he's up the exchange. Not much you can do here. And after bishop captures on f1, if he goes uh, for uh, rook captures, uh, if I go rook captures on e7 instead, he just moves the bishop. And again, it's just a much better position. Rook is coming to a1. That's uh, there. There's not much I can do. So after this queen to e7 move, uh, I wasn't just uh, about to allow this bishop e6 to c4 maneuver. I played queen to c3 right away, uh, just going after that e5 pawn, but uh, this doesn't really work. Uh, so feel free to pause the video and try to figure out what, uh, what Matia played uh, that really complicated things for me. Uh, while well, I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on finding such a such a unique move. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, here he played b4. And here basically he said, yeah, you, you can't capture here. And uh, well, I don't really have all, uh, all, um, a good square for my queen. If I move the queen, let's say queen b3, again, bishop to e6 to c4, it's the same idea. And uh, well, there's uh, there's just not much to do. I mean, probably going for this is the best uh, and, you know, just suffer 
uh, being the exchange down, but I decided uh, to capture it uh, either way. I played queen captures, he played queen captures, I played knight captures on e5, and now he gets this one, bishop to e2, and again, uh, one, of, <laughs> one of my rooks will fall. So I was uh, uh, for the entire game I was trying to keep my uh, to keep my rook on f1 away from his light square bishop, but the light square bishop finds the way. Uh, so yeah, e even though it's not uh, you know from a6 or it's not this maneuver, but uh, you know it's it's g4 to e2. So now my rook is hit and I don't have a good move here. Uh, I have to allow him to, to grab the exchange. So I try to complicate things uh, a little bit more with rook to h3, uh, but it doesn't work. Uh, everything is perfectly placed. He just played bishop captures on f1. I played knight g6 with check. Uh, he has to move the king uh, due to the pinned. Uh, so king to g8. I played knight captures on f8. And here he just played bishop to c4. Uh, and it was in this position on move 31 that I resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, my knight is under attack, <clears throat> so I either lose a piece, uh, or if I decide to save the piece with knight d7, it even comes with an attack on the bishop, but it doesn't matter, uh, since he has rook to a1, and here it's just all over. And bishop to c4, of course, uh, guards the b3 square, so I don't have rook to b3. Uh, so that's that's it, that's uh, 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 a game from round 6 uh, that uh, my opponent won, won uh, in, in a very nice way. So here, uh, at, after he played queen to e7, prepared this bishop uh, to e6, what I should have done is actually just knight bd2. And here, uh, the, the, the threat is eliminated, uh, because now after, <clears throat> uh, let's say, bishop to e6, if he continues in this fashion, then I, then I do have queen to c3, and the knight uh, uh, prevents bishop from coming to c4. And uh, if he doesn't, of course, if knight b to d2, uh, I, I just have to try and consolidate. He's still better. I mean, uh, not not material wise, but he does have the bishop pair. He controls more space. But if I, uh, I if I get h3 and if I can maybe uh, force a trade here and and uh, get my f1 rook into the game, it's still a game. So yeah, I was uh, I was I was very happy w with how I played. Uh, didn't didn't really enjoy all that much uh, playing against the bishop pair, and it was a bit of a bit of a passive uh, passive uh, approach against the Pirts. Uh, but at least now I will have uh, some ideas on uh, <clears throat> what to, what to study when when going against the Pirts, and and will be able to pre pre prepare myself uh, uh, a little bit better for next time. Uh, so yeah, uh, here knight bd2 would have been better, but like I said, queen to c3, and, and the rest is history. So like I said, three more rounds tomorrow. I will try to uh, either show one of the games from tomorrow, or if maybe we finish a little bit faster, maybe I will have time to, to finally start the, the Morphe saga. If, if not, we will at some point. Uh, but yeah, so far I'm on, th I'm on uh, I think, uh, three and a half out of six. Three wins, two losses, and one draw. So pretty decent as uh, my opponents were were pretty much higher rated than myself. I even won some twenty rating points, uh, maybe some uh, a little bit less than that. But uh, if I do well tomorrow, then it's it's going to be great. Uh, but yeah, congratulations once again to my opponent. It was it was a really interesting game, and you, as you can see, uh, even though you know people say a lot a lot of things about the pits, it can actually be a, a, a usable opening, you know, uh, for for every tournament. So uh, that's uh, the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I actually enjoyed it, even though I lost. Uh, I would like to thank uh, uh, Gordon Gutman, uh, Zitemp, Morgan Diringa, uh, Renato Mercurio, and Dominic Deja for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon uh, with uh, with whatever I can I can do. Uh, you know, if I manage manage my time well. And I forgot to mention, uh, Matia is currently on six out of six, so he's doing really excellent this tournament. So yeah, uh, thank you all. Uh, I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.